Okay. Um, yeah, so as James said, I'm the director of product at uh, Lookbook HQ. Any of you guys heard of Lookbook HQ? We, do, we, need an, we have an awareness thing we gotta improve. Um, so I'll go over a little bit about my uh, background a bit more. So I did engineering at Waterloo, uh, where I did mechatronics engineering, and I'm not building robots right now, but, um, and after that I did my uh, MBA at Queen's University, um, and I have worked at Apple in California, on the iPhone engineering um, quality team, which is a really intense time. I saw Steve Jobs. He was my hero at that time. It still is, actually, kind of. I've also worked at Bell, and then um, my most recent experience before um, Lookbook HQ was at Loblaw Digital. Any of you guys know about Loblaw Digital? So it was a really interesting time when I joined. I, I was one of the first PMs on their grocery business. Saw that grow from about 80 million to over 200 million, and that was just phenomenal growth. Um, and uh, seeing that type of growth um, and, um, uh, was, was really interesting, and, and Vision had a, a big part to play in it because there was a hell of a lot of things that went wrong. But if you, you know, because, you have, because of a clear vision, we made it out, and we actually did grow. Um, I also had a startup called PlateApp, which I'll talk about. And um, I taught product management at BrainStation for about a year, which is a very interesting experience. I, I've stopped now. Um, might do it again in the future. It just got repetitive, but um, it was really good to see a pulse of what's happening in Toronto uh, in the startup community. Uh, but I want to know a little bit more about you. So I'm guessing most people here are from the development side. Okay. Um, who here is a team lead? Manager. Okay. All right. So good. All right. So I think this will be be pretty pretty helpful for everyone. So um, before I start talking about vision, I think it's really critical to define what vision is. And this is the dictionary definition of it. The act or power of imagination, right? A mode of seeing or conceiving unusual foresight. And the, and the unusual foresight is, uh, is a thing that's really critical uh, and what I want to convey to, to you guys here. So, you know, my vision for the talk by the end of this 45 minutes, 40 minutes hopefully, is for you guys to understand why you guys need to have a vision um, when you're leading your teams. I'm gonna talk a little bit about how to become a visionary, and don't worry, you don't have to be Steve Jobs to be visionary, and then some tips on, on the implementation side. So yeah, I said I'll keep it real. You know, it's Steve Jobs and Elon Musk aren't the only visionary people. I will talk about them because they are some of my favorite people, but um, you know, we'll, we'll keep it real. And it will be very practical things that you can apply. So let's get into why. So um, the reason that you need vision is, and I, I kind of defined it here, when what you want to build and accomplish um, is really far away or challenging, the only way to close the gap is by having a co compelling vision that you believe in and your team believes in. Now you might ask, well, what if you just pay people a lot of money? Will they just work for you? What if you give people a title, right, a senior title? Will they, you know, if you, if you don't have a clear vision, you just have people working, will that work? Or what if you have a fun workplace with pool tables and, you know, the whole gamut? Well, you know, all these things work in the short term, but uh, people nowadays especially need to be motivated and passionate and believe in your vision um, if they want to continue to work at the company. And I'm going to talk over, I'm going to go over some of the greatest examples um, that I find of really clear vision. So um, Elon Musk ask, actually has this um, on his website for the last 10 years. So 10 years ago, he wrote an article about what his vision is for Tesla. And now, 10 years later, it's almost accomplished, which is really interesting. And um, he talked about when they launched the, the model, uh, the Roadster, which is their electric sports car, from, from looking at it from the outside, he said, look, yes, this might look like a failure, right? Uh, or, you know, it wasn't the greatest car. You know, uh, the world doesn't need another premium sports car. But he said that, you know, the, the, the Roadster will give me funding to be able to build out the Model S, which will give me more funding to help build out the Model 3. And when, uh, when people do switch to um, electric cars and do it in masses, then you can get more, uh, you can get be, be a more sustainable 
uh, planet. And, he, and being Elon Musk, he actually goes through the mat math on the page showing that electric cars are 86% more efficient than gasoline cars, uh, c considering all the, uh, everything, everything involved um, with building them. And so, you know, I have two of my classmates at Waterloo working at Tesla, and, and one of them, she, she posts pictures or on Snapchat, she, and it says, you know, going into work at 5.30 a.m., right? And, and this happens a lot because it's Tesla and, and California, ha, ha, they have shift work. Now, um, she is capable of getting a job anywhere, right? She could probably get a job in another place that pays her the same. Yet, she goes into work early every day and spends 12 hours because Elon Musk has been able to c uh, convey his vision so well. And so, you know, that's, that's, that's where, where I talk about, you know, having a vision is, will really help you close that gap. Otherwise, people are not going to feel that there's a purpose and, and, and they might leave. Now, um, if w you guys should definitely go and read this. Elon Musk, now that 10 years are over, he has his vision for the next 10 years, and it's crazy. Like, it is amazing. Um, I, I suggest you guys to go on and read it online, but it describes a world that is uh, very, very different. And, and because he achieved his first 10 year vision, you know, you think that, okay, he's going to be able to do this one too. So, go and check that out. Um, the other one is the other company that I obviously really like is Apple. Um, you know, Apple, uh, the, the team that developed the original iPhone described the experience as stressful and terrifying. Um, when I worked in California, when I was working there, when people had to do a demo for Steve Jobs, it was like not fun at all. It is not fun time to be, uh, fun place to be. But you know, people s slug through and they get through because they, they, they so believe in um, Steve Jobs' vision of w where the product is going to go and they were able to launch it. And you know, if you read stories about how the original iPhone was launched, they said it might have never come out, but it did launch. And the, la the last example of a company that I really like is local Wealth Simple. Um, and I know that, uh, and I think they really believe in their, their vision. And uh, one of, I know someone who's an SVP of investments at Brookfield Management, uh, which is one of the largest uh, investment funds. And, and you know, he's considering um, investing in, in Wealth Simple, like putting his money in, in, in Wealth Simple. Not because of the robo-investing part, but at the end of the year, they do things like tax loss har harvesting, which is only available to the rich people right now. You basically sell stocks that are losing money and buy more just so your taxes are minimized. This type of thing is, was only available to the wealthy, and, and now WealthSimple is really behind their mission that you know, they should have financial services that are easy to use for everyone. Um, so, and they took out a Super Bowl ad, right? And you guys work at WealthSimple, or you guys are very excited about that? Oh, okay, cool. Um, I like them a lot. So, well, you know, what, you might be asking, why should I care? I'm not planning to start a company, right? I don't need to be Elon Musk. But, you know, if you are a team leader or if you are a new manager, and if you're running large, complex projects, if you're seeing that your team is burning out or um, your team doesn't see the bigger picture, you know, a clear vision can help. Now, now, this next slide is so interesting, uh, and, it, and it kind of explains to you, and not everyone, it's just not for millennials, but for other people too. Millennials um, rank a vision higher than financial results. I don't care if the company is not making money, but if they believe in the vision and they see a purpose, that works for them, which can be a bit concerning because you actually have to make money. But um, sometimes you got to support yourself. But uh, from a company standpoint, I thought that was really, really um, interesting. Um, I, I, I don't think you guys read this, but uh, Snapchat's SEC filing said that the company may never make money. But they, they have, they're very, uh, they ha do have a compelling vision of how, uh, how they describe it. So it's just interesting. So, you know, and, you know, athletes do this too. It's just whenever you're trying to uh, get somewhere that's long and tough, you have to be able to, to uh, visualize it and to see success for, for, uh, to, in order to make it happen. So now let's go into the how. So I hope that you, you are somewhat convinced as to why you need a vision. We'll talk about how. Really like this a lot. Henry Ford, if I had asked people what they wanted, they would have said a faster horse. 
right? Okay, so let's recap. Uh, the definition of vision was the act or power of imagination, the mode of seeing or conceiving, unusual foresight. Now, unusual foresight, how do you, how do you think you can get unusual foresight? Any, any ideas here? Random Sorry? Random meetings. Random meetings, okay. All right. Anyone else? Okay. All right. Deep context in a certain area, right? So having really, really, cl uh, w when you experience things more th in a certain area more than others, you live and breathe that area, you're going to see things that other people don't see. That, with your, your past experience connecting the dots, helps you have a point of view, and that point of view is a vision. Now, this is interesting. So, you know, you look at a lot of founders, they start their own problems. They're solving their own problems, right? If you think about Dropbox, right? Um, Drew Houston, he was driving from one place to another. He wanted to transfer a file. And, you know, he, tra he was traveling quite a bit, and he had a lot of contacts uh, in that situation. It was a problem that was very relevant to him, and so he made Dropbox. Facebook, uh, you guys watched the movie of Facebook? He just wanted to um, date women, so he wanted to see everyone at Harvard, and that's, this is a good library of how to do that. And there's other reasons too. But. And then the other one I like is a local example of FreshBooks. Uh, Mike was solving his own problem of invoicing. Um, right? So it, it's, it's like when you have deep context in an area, you're able to have a point of view that might be contrary to what other people think. And so I'll use... Um, some of my, my own examples. So um, when I joined Lookbook HQ as, as, their, as a new director of product, um, you know, I had, a, I had a vision for the team, and the vision was in three phases. I, I, I covered up what that actually is in case there's competitors here. Um, anybody? Anyways. So phase one was about you know, doing the basics well, and I set a time limit on that, and I had key points on how we would get there. Phase two was establishing data-driven norms. And phase three was establishing culture of experimentation. Using these words and calling it a vision for the team and sharing it with, it, it, it's, uh, this being an artifact really motivated and pumped up the teams. And they themselves uh, started to include this in their um, evaluation, right? So, you know, it's just, it's, uh, and where did I get context off this, for this? Well, it was my year of teaching at BrainStation. Uh, in product management, and also seeing the growth from 80 million to 200 million and going from chaos to some, you know, some order. Um, yeah, and, and, and literally, the, it was the sharing this artifact was, was really helpful to motivate the team. Um, the other example was at Loblaw Digital. We had this, so we were taking, we were doing banner migration. That basically means um, taking over Loblaw's website, which is one of the most traffic sites in Canada. And this project was, I know it's recorded, it's probably some, comp not ho nothing too confidential, but it was very late and over budget. And, um, you know, I joined there in November, and having s launched um, a startup with one developer, I'm like, this is possible. Like, we, I have a team of six developers, I should be able to do this. So I painted that picture, set a deadline, and was able to uh, launch it an on time. And example number three is, is off my startup. So where did I get the context from that? So it's a health app, and I've tried a lot of health apps. And I'll just uh, go over wh Monday, what it is. Start diet. Wednesday, cheat day. Friday, quit diet. No matter the diet, thousands of people fail every day. Why? They lose motivation. Plate app is the simplest and most effective solution that works with any meal strategy. Upload a snap of each meal you eat, let your scientifically selected peer group keep you accountable and encourage you to eat healthier. Research shows that keeping a food journal results in twice as much weight loss because it brings awareness of what you're eating. With peer support, you'll be over two and a half times more likely to stick to your diet. Using Plate app is as simple as one, two, three. Log meals using one-click photo journaling. Rate your team members' meals in an anonymous, judgment-free manner using a guide we'll provide you. Check your progress to see which meals you need to improve. Calorie counting is hard, and having used other photo journaling apps, 
we've made the process of logging meals as simple as possible. So you'll actually do it. So the reason I share that um, is that that video, I, I hated that tag tagline. Anyways, um, that video was made for $250. So I showed this to other people um, that have startups and they're like, well, this would have spent thousands of dollars on it. Um, I, I had a vision for, for this app and I got a, a developer to work on it for free w for equity, right? Uh, w with equity and uh, it was my classmate from, from Mechatronics. And I got a whole team rally around it. I was able to launch it in the app store. Um, and it was all because I had a vision. Now, just because you have a vision doesn't mean that you'll be successful. And vision can actually be a little bit dangerous. And we'll go into that in the last part. Vision is so vision can be such an uh, effective tool that it can actually be a little bit dangerous. Um, but we'll get into that in, on, on the last part. So, you know, you might be thinking, well, you know, I'm not going to be a founder. You know, how do I get the vision, right? Your founder might have the vision. How do you? How do you uh, believe that vision? How do you understand it? And how do you communicate it to your teams? Well, you got to learn, right? You have to meet with your founders. You have to meet with your PMs. You have to like listen to podcasts in your industry. You have to subscribe to industry news um, because at the end of the day, um, as a team lead, you know your end goal is that you have to be able to understand um, th your vision clear enough that you can. can can communicate it to your team, and the key word here is convincingly, right? Um, if you're not able to do it convincingly, they're, they're gonna, you know, they're like, it's not very motivating. And you know, you might find that um, you can keep employees for a while, but if they're really not motivated and don't believe in what, what you're doing, um, it, it can be, uh, it's not very helpful. So you know, if, you're, if you don't understand the, the, the vision, you know, bug your PM, bug your founder, sit down with them and understand it. And you, you know, that passion will show when you're, when you're talking to your teams. I mean, at the end of the day, um, you know, vision really helps you close the gap um, when something is really long and really uh, complex. Build, measure, learn, what you guys have heard about, experimentation, that is great for iterations, right? But when it comes to making leaps that are very far, vision is what's gonna help you get there. And you know, with that, Vision is great, it's fantastic, but it's also a little bit dangerous because it's, um, um, it's not always, e like, because it's, it's a point of view, if you're very convincing, you can uh, convince people to go down a route and then it's not, it, it ends up not being successful. It's okay as, as long as I feel if your intentions were good. And I'll share the example of um, Theranos. Anyone know about Theranos? Right. So, so she was, uh, she's 20, I think she was 21 when she dropped out of Stanford, started a company that would uh, make blood tests um, a lot cheaper. Uh, the company was valued at $9 billion, and um, there was cracks in their vision. I mean, there, there was cracks in the product. And uh, it was one report um, by, I think, Wall Street Journal uh, that was that was out in the market, and within within I think a week, the valuation dropped from two billion nine billion to very close to nothing, right? And it's just because um, you know she was so convincing about Theranos's uh, Theranos's vision. If you actually go and uh, YouTube Elizabeth Holmes, I mean she has a really interesting personality. She like really convinces you. And so, do you see where you know having uh, some foresight and being very convincing uh, is great, but it can also be uh, if your product doesn't work out, it can be dangerous. The other example is this one I wanted to share because this is as of September 1st. Um, anyone know about Juicero? This is crazy. So, um, yeah, this is actually, a, this was a $700 machine that they reduced the price to $400. And guess what it does? It magically squeezes juice. Um, and, and you know what? They, the, the founder is so, he had such a compelling vision. He was so convincing. Guess how much he managed to raise? $120 million. And from who? Google Ventures, Kleiner Perkins, right? This is, these, are, these are your elite investors. Of, you know, and this is not your first time in investors, right? And then uh, ended up, th there was a Bloomberg report where they say showed this $400 machine 
if you just took the juice bag and you squeeze it with your hand, it, it, the results were exactly the same. And, you know, um, a after, you know, September 1st, r m the company is closed in a week, right? So, you know, if you bec but if you listen to, to the founder on stage, I mean, he is just a very typical Silicon Valley, like, so vision he sounds visionary. So you can see how, how vision is, it can be dangerous. Now, I think the, m the, the most uh, dangerous thing is Kickstarter, because if you can fool investors like Google Ventures, Kleiner Perkins, uh, imagine what you can do by, by, by fooling retail investors, right? Like, uh, or us backing projects. So, um, yeah, just something to think about. Uh, I think that if your intentions are good and you have a good vision, it's fine, but it can be dangerous. It can be very, you know, having a really good video of what you think the future is uh, can convince people to put, mo put their own money into it. All right, so that was about, um, yeah, well let's go into implementation. Um, really, implementation is, uh, is very simple. Actually, it's not simple, but the, the, the underlying principle is very simple. You gotta be a broken record about your vision. That's it. So, um, you know, I think it's, uh, there are lots of books about how to implement vision, and all of them are great, but, but all they talk about are different artifacts of how to make sure that your vision is known by everyone. You've seen vision cards in, in people's badges. You see, um, I, I worked at Facebook for a month in their Toronto office. They had posters everywhere that talked about their vision and uh, it's really just being a broken vision, bro broken record about it. And I, of course, I love Elon uh, Musk, so I'll use this example. I, I ordered the Model 3. Anyone else ordered that? It's actually affordable, it's not crazy. Um, but, you know, uh, he also runs a space company and that's profitable called SpaceX. And um, as you walk into SpaceX's office, it says that they want to live on Mars, like they want to cohabit on Mars. Now that is so far out, 2029. That is so far out, but, you know, all the work that, and people wear shirts like Occupy Mars, you know, uh, Elon Musk says, I would like to die on Mars, just not on impact. Right? This is so far out, 29, 20 plus years out. Uh, yet that's what they believe in. And their side business of launching spaceships into, uh, into space that's profitable is just their means to get to Mars. Uh, th that's really quite enlightening. So, I mean, the, the last thing I'll share is this is just one article about how to implement um, vision. I'm not going to go into in detail because all of them are approximately the same. You have to create some artifacts and share them with the rest of your team. Um, but there are a ton of books and all of them have the same concept. So I really wanted you guys to understand the why and the how um, and the implementation we can, uh, you can read. So anyways, that's it. You guys have any questions?